considered them my favorite Sundays, amen, because it always reminds me of what Jesus did to save me, amen, and every time I'm able to come into the sanctuary and give God praise on the first Sunday, I think about Calvary, amen, I think about him dying for me. supposed to change the word, but, but God didn't say we couldn't make it personal. Amen. And I, I always I always personalize certain scriptures for God so loved Ian Cox that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. <laughs> and I love that because it's a way to remind me of the daunting task that I have to work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Because night is coming where no man can work. Amen. We kind of started it two weeks ago where we preached that text in John 9, 4. And we're going to stay in that vein. We're going to go to different texts that, that kind of amplify what we're talking about when we're dealing of the works of the works of him that sent us. Amen. I must work the works of him that sent us. Me, amen. Uh, before we jump in for prayer, I have a couple of public service announcements or PSAs, if you would call them. Wear your masks, amen. Please, ma'am, please, sir, wear your mask. This is going into our holiday season, amen. I know many of you want to congregate, many of you want to be around family members that you haven't been around or friends that you want to see. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask that all of you be as safe as you possibly can. Amen. Wear your masks when you are in crowded places. Amen. Whenever you're in public spaces, wear your masks. Don't forget, saints, we're asking each and every person that can and will fill out your census. You can go on to 2020census.gov and fill out your census. And for those of you who are just uh, going to exercise your American right, boardofelections.cuyahoga.gov, go on and make sure you register to vote. Amen. And vote. Amen. Make sure you're registered to vote and vote. Our ancestors died so that we could be free. Amen. And part of that freedom, part of that freedom is exercising your American right. Amen. So if you can and will, please do that. I won't trouble you long, saints. I promise you we will be out of here as soon as the Lord says, well done. Amen. But Matthew Chapter 13 is the book that we want to go to, Matthew chapter 13. We'll be reading in our hearing so that we can get the entire context, verses 3 through 9 and then verses 18 through 23. We're still staying on our basic theme from John 9 and 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. And the night cometh when no man can work. Amen. We're staying on that same vein. We'll probably be here for the next three to four weeks. Amen. Uh, so Matthew 13, 3 through 9. And then we're going to just go down and, and, and read 18 through 23 in your hearing. And whether you're looking at it electronically or in your holy writ, uh, let us look to the Lord in prayer for direction. Amen. And clarity. Father God in heaven, thank you, O oh God, for allowing me to spend the time that I needed with you. Lord, your people need to hear a word from you. Use me now. Everything I 
I say will be consistent with sound doctrine. I love you, Lord. Take over now. As an instrument of your praise, I yield myself to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Let all the church of God say, Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 13. church 
His response was, God called me to preach in the pulpit. Now, I just don't preach in basements. Jesus shows us in the text that whatever opportunity arises and presents itself, we have a responsibility to preach and teach the gospel whenever and wherever it is needed. Everybody who's been blood washed and born again and, uh, and believe that Jesus died and paid it all, we have been deputized to go out into the world and tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus wherever we go. It can be a storefront. Uh, it could be a hallway. It could be a basement. It could be a street corner. It could be an elevator. God has deputized us. The Holy Ghost is our captain. The Word of God, the Bible, is our God book. And the world is our mission field. According to Mark 16 and 15, he says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Working the works of him that sent us to go out and tell somebody that Jesus saves, he lives, he rules, reigns, and has regency over everything and over everyone. God has deputized us, and the pandemic is forcing us to work the works. Jesus knows exactly where, where we are. He knows exactly what we are going through. In the text, he shows us a creative method he uses to share with those who need a word from the Lord. In this passage, Jesus is not inside of a majestic architectural masterpiece. He's not surrounded by beautiful pulpit furniture, carpet and pews. He's not in a beautiful, solid structure of Solomon's temple. Jesus is on the bow of a ship. He uses what is necessary to make sure that people can still receive a word. I know that seems minor, but I'm so glad that God gave us Facebook and YouTube and websites and phones and street corners because someone out there needs a word from the Lord. Being able to tell someone about Jesus is a work that should never be closed to just the sanctuary. In this text, we see Jesus preaching out of opportunity. This, my friends, is the time we live in today. We have the opportunity to go into all the world and work the works of him that sent us. We need to go into the city. We've got to go into the fields. We've got to go to the food giveaways. We've got to go into the neighborhoods. We've got to go on our jobs. Go, go, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. This parable, Jesus is describing to us the results of sharing the word of God in the world. He tells us that a number of people will not ever be followers will not ever be followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus speaks of the rejectors, the fallen, the fair weathers, the overwhelmed, and the fruitful. Let me do that again. Jesus speaks of the rejectors, the fallen, the fair weathers, the overwhelmed, and the fruitful. If you are a Christian, and you, you and I, if you are a Christian, you and I are recognized as souls. Our responsibility is the work that we have been charged to do without any question of success or failure. If we love God and are called according to his purpose, we must seek to perfect our sowing or farming skills. Kingdom work is not just sanctuary work. And I believe God wanted his church around the world to go back to kingdom work instead of sanctuary worship. The focus of many of our churches was sanctuary worship. But in this parable, the focus of the kingdom is to be a sower of, this, of seed in the world. I'm not sure when the change happened, but at some point, it's obvious that we are guilty of putting the sanctuary in front of saving souls. I know, I know, but, but, but we all can now say that we're guilty. Get in our Bibles 
and work the work of him that sent us. Evangelism is a lifestyle. It's not just a crusade. It's not just a one-time event or a festival. When we go out, Jesus warns us about the people we will encounter while we are on our mission in sowing field. The sower is a true Christian and the seed is the uncut word of God. These four areas of earth represent the kinds of people that we will encounter on our journey. The first kind of person, as we move on, lest I keep you too long, is what we would call the rejecter. When anyone hears the word of God, the word of the kingdom, and does not understand, then comes the wicked one and snatches away what is sown. This is he who received seed by what the scripture calls the wayside. This wayside person, uh, this wayside literally means it's a beaten path that has been trodden on by a whole lot of people for a long period of time and the path has become hardened. So when the seed hits it, it stays on top of the ground and before it can take any root, the birds come along and eat up or Satan comes along and snatches it away so that he can take them away from the cares of themselves instead of the cares of the kingdom. Their heart is so hard, settled in the normalities of worldly living, that before the sea can penetrate their hardened hearts, Satan comes, snatches it away. You know who this is. This is a person who does not care about anything related to God. There's no concern for the things of God, or God's people. This person has a heart that is hardened just like a beaten path, and the scripture calls it the wayside. Before penetrating power of the word or seed can get down into this person, Satan comes and takes it away. But that does not give us an excuse not to preach or teach the gospel to them. Keep on preaching, keep on teaching, Keep on sowing seed because draw, God can draw the worst of them, even those with hardened hearts. Keep on working the work because we are not responsible for where the seed falls. We're just responsible for spreading the seed. Good farmers plant when it's good and plant when it's bad. We must be like Paul when he told Timothy, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. In short, a child of God should never let anybody rob you of your testimony about the one who saved you, the one who's keeping you, the one who loved you so much, the one that died for you. Don't let anybody rob you of how good God has been to you. Always be ready to tell them even when they don't want to hear it. The second person, the second person is your, is your fallen. Notice in the text, this second person, he received seed, but the Bible calls it in stony places. The same as he that heareth the word and Adam with joy receives it, yet had he not root in himself, but doth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. This person is the, is the picture of the, of, the, of the woman on that commercial who's at the bottom of the stairs who has fallen and can't get up. You see them. They first hear the music of the gospel. Then they hear the gospel message. And because God has put them on an emotional roller coaster and they have an emotional high, they, they say, hallelujah, I want to give my life to Christ. But just as soon as trouble comes, just as soon as they get a new boo, just as soon as they get a new job, 
Just as soon as some kind of hurt or pain comes, they run away like they never knew them. This kind of ground, this kind of ground, it looks good on the top. It dresses nice, but underneath it is a hard sandstone. So when the seed hits it, it has a little bit of a sprout with no roots. This person is one who looks good, who smells good, but they are fallen and they can't get up. Why? Because they have no root. No root. Now this does not give the sower, the Christian, the believer, the blood washed, baptized, sanctified Christian an excuse not to share the gospel because we're not responsible for where the seed falls. We're just responsible for throwing the seed. The third person, the third person, he says, he also that receiveth seed among thorns. He is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Jesus goes to this brother and he says, I want you to forsake your riches, forsake what you're doing, take up your cross and follow me. And this brother says, Jesus, uh, I would come, but I need to go and bury my father. And Jesus says, let the dead bury the dead, because now is the time for workers to get to work. He wasn't saying, don't be concerned about your father. He was saying, prioritize where you put kingdom work. Another one said, hey, uh, 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 Jesus, Jesus, uh, I, I, I would come, but you know, I just got married, and, and you know I can't go. And he says, because of the cares of the world, the Bible says that the word hits this kind of person, but because of the cares of the world, it chokes them. Uh, uh, it reminds me, it reminds me of the story of Deacon Too Busy. I don't know if y'all remember Deacon Too Busy. Uh, deacon Too Busy was a deacon that, that every time one of the young people in the church asked him to do something for them or do something with them in the church, he would always respond, I'm too busy. And one day, the pastor walked to him and said, Deacon, I need you to come help us. We need to go and do this and do that. And he said, Pastor, I would come, but I'm too busy. And so they changed his name from the actual deacon's name it was. I'll leave that anonymous because this is a true story. And all of the kids, whenever they saw him, they started calling him Deacon Too Busy. Because he was too busy to do anything for the kingdom. Too busy to do anything for the children. Too busy to do anything for the church. Too busy to do anything for God. This is the one who has thorns choke out the word when he hears it. And he can't get busy. He can't get right because he's too busy doing his own thing. But that does not give us an excuse, child of God, woman of God, man of God, to stop throwing the seed because our responsibility is not who hears it. Our responsibility is just to get it out there so they can hear it. Our responsibility is to keep on working the work of him that sent us. Keep on preaching and teaching the word. Keep on standing for God. And you will not be popular. This doesn't get on MSNBC, CNN, Fox, Channel 8, Channel 3. This does not get on 19 News because the gospel will break up some stuff. It will cause people to turn away from what they love and turn to God and whom they love or they should love. I want you to know, don't worry about where the seed falls. Just keep on throwing the seed. Wherever you go, work the works of him that sent you. Last and certainly not least, and I'm closing, I promise. Everybody won't hear you when you preach and teach the gospel. 
But this last person, the Bible says, has good ground. He hears the word. Not only hears it, he or she, they, they understand it. And then all of a sudden, God is so rich and so good to them that they start bringing forth fruit. Do you know that if you plant a seed, it doesn't just grow up with one sprout. When you plant a seed, it grows up in many sprouts. If you plant one, one corn seed, it doesn't just sprout one ear of corn. It sprouts many ears. And when you have realized that God has called you to work the works, he did not call you to come in the sanctuary all the time. Did not call you to sit on boards and do nothing in the world. Did not call you so that you can sit back and have fun with everybody and not enjoy the love that he has for you sharing the gospel with somebody who's dying. Because no joy is better than seeing somebody grow in Christ. No joy is better than knowing that the person you shared God with turned their lives over to God and all of a sudden they're sharing God with everybody. No joy is better than knowing that God saved you so that you can share with somebody else. This gospel should be preached everywhere by everyone who has been blood washed and born again. Now listen, saints, this, this message was not for those who are still living in sin. This message is not for those who don't have a concern for God and don't care about the things of God. This message is not for the fallen and can't get up. This message is not for deacon too busy and those who are too busy to do church work. This message is for those who have, who have remembered about Friday when Jesus died on Calvary. And about Friday when, they, when he locked his head in his shoulders and paid the penalty for us all. About Friday when they had to get him in the ground before sundown. So when they went to break his legs, he was already dead and they pierced him in the side. The Bible says blood and water came streaming down. The blood for the washing away of our sins. The water is the word of life and they shall be cleansed by the washing of the word. He died and I want you to know he died. But early one Sunday morning, he got up. This message is for those who believe. And if you don't believe, you just heard the gospel. Make sure that your heart is good ground. Take it in. Love God with all your heart. And give him your life today. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for allowing us these small moments where we are able to take in just a piece of your word. I'm asking, oh God, that let your word fall on good ground. Somebody needs you today, oh God. We're praying right now that somebody gives their life over to you. Everybody's not going to hear. But for those that have heard this meager message, I ask right now if you would prick their hearts, let them know that you still love them, and draw them in. We'll be grateful, oh God. We'll praise and worship your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Holy Grove, you have your responsibility. Make sure you pay your tithes, you pay your offerings. For those of you who have continued to give, God bless you. God bless you for what you have done. For those of you who haven't given, I ask, I, 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 I implore, I encourage you to give. Because the church work must go on even when we're not in the sanctuary. We still have to honor God with our gifts. You can
can give now. It'll be pinned down on the bottom. You can go on the website, give on our webpage. You can go on to Zelle. Just put in Holy Grove uh, 2844 at yahoo.com. We'll come up and you can bless God. Amen. If you don't like computers, some of you don't like it, it's all right. Mail in. P.O. Box 200725, Cleveland, Ohio, 44120. It's giving time now. Amen. 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 Saints, we thank you for sharing this time with us. I ask that you get your, get your juice ready, get your, get, your, get your communion ready. Amen. We can take communion virtually. So, and, and I want you to, to make a concerted effort to wake up everybody in your house. Wake them up right now, wake them up. I'm gonna give you about 30, 40 seconds. Wake them up. Make sure you prepare communion for them. If you don't have the little communion cups, get some glasses out of your cabinet. Amen, somebody? You may not have the fancy cracker that we have in church, get you some saltines, amen? Go ahead and do it now as we prepare for our communion. Get with your families. Take communion with your families. It's one of the most sacred times. It's a beautiful moment. Jesus says, do it in remembrance of me. Come on, let's get ready.
words of him that sent us while it is day. Because night is coming when no man can work. And we take this time to commemorate what Jesus did for us on Calvary. Jesus oftentimes shows us exactly what he wants us to do, not just for God, but for each other. You see it as the disciples are entering the upper room in the text. Jesus is there. He's washing their feet, even the feet of the one who betrayed him. Sometimes it's got to fall on rocky ground. But Jesus washed anyway. He loved anyway. He sat them down and he said, This bread, though it be broken, it represents my broken body, which shall be battered for you, beaten for you. And I, I, I believe salvation started on Thursday when they began to whip him and the flesh began to be removed from his body. When the blood came streaming down on Thursday as they whipped him, when blood came down, I believe it fell into a fountain that will never run dry. As often as you do this, Jesus says, do it. Praise God, somebody. <laughs> Y'all have